Call the March 9, 2015, ASD 350 Board of Education meeting to order. I'd like to welcome the visitors. Christy. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? No, no changes. Retain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. All second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. <coughs> Your consent agenda items are there. Nothing really unusual to report there. Um, the financial report, we had one extra line on the bottom if it was confusing. The, the, it was total. So the second to last line on that would actually be the total. That bottom one, that $8 million is a little high. Just got an extra line there with the total. So that's the only thing unusual. Any other questions? Entertain a motion to approve. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second it to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Are there any patron comments tonight? Okay. Move on to the business agenda. First up, course and curriculum review. Uh, this agenda item was really just to make sure the board understands what courses we offer, you know, the class schedule, the time that our kids spend in PE and elementary and some of those things. So um, in your packet, starting on page 17, <coughs> is the course schedule. Um, when we get to our budget discussion, we'll be talking more numbers and staffing levels and things like that but for this agenda item i just wanted to make sure everybody uh, understood the courses and things we offer um, you know, with our budget situation it's difficult to talk about adding anything or uh, offering our kids more than we offer but but uh, uh, mr bergen did you have anything to offer on the information there specific yeah. you want no, to point the, out the, the class schedule no, <coughs> of, um, those um, the online classes we offer are actually aren't on there they would just be offered they're offered a couple hours a day where kids can take college classes right. in the morning. other than that uh, um, we we'll have some office aides throughout the day yeah we have aides we have or, some um, teacher aides teacher aides right aid, so. yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah that, that that pretty much where the kids one of those hours is where they go, um, except if they're taking an online class, you know, they actually be there. So. Anybody have any questions about courses we offer? Or the vocational classes that are on there, too. Oh, yeah. There's vocational classes on there. I'll get to the vocational classes? Mm -hmm. um, how many kids are there doing the classes through Barton? And what classes are they taking that are still in? Because did some drop? We had four taking uh, uh, plant science or animal science, and then you had four. We had first still? semester. It was the first semester class. Four of them took okay. animal science, and we had to have six to make the class work for the second semester. So we couldn't come up with the six, so they did not have. They couldn't send anybody down before that. On campus, we have step five students that go to. Uh, Barton every afternoon, Monday through Thursday, to work to, uh, for a class for automotive. And that picking you needed six for them to come and here? To go there. No, they, we, they go there, so that was okay. Yeah. 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 And how, and how many are going? Five. And there's still five? Yeah, they started first semester, and they're, they're going to, they had breaks. Um, they had different steps as they went through the year. So electrical, electrical, intro to automotive. Intro to automotive, yeah, they just got progression to go through the year. So. This, this part of that Senate Bill 155 that the state pays the tuition. Right. So really the kids are getting those college credits for <coughs> So that, that's been productive. They, they have five tuition free. Yeah, yeah. So there's two classes or would be more if there was interest in it? Yeah, yeah or, if, or if we could get another instructor or any instructor to come down. It's just, that's kind of tricky to get an instructor to come 
Yeah. And Barton can't justify sending anybody yeah. there minimum six. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. <coughs> yeah. To make it worthwhile. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we had the college algebra. Yes. A uh, speech class at night. Right. The college algebra is during the day. Yeah, Mr. Wood teaches that in the regular schedule. The kids get college credit for that, but also get high school credit. Yeah, not only schedule the vocational classes. <coughs> Mrs. Kimmon has vocational classes. Mrs. Patterson has vocational classes. Mr. Miller has them. Um, Mrs. Benke has a couple. So we have people throughout that have vocational classes at the pathway, of career and tech head pathway that they work on, that they, we get funding for, 25 funding. I have a question. Okay. If you want. Well, no. <clears throat> I'm gonna change the okay. Let me, um, as long as you have funding. So, well, there's it, may, it may come up later, but if we go to this block grant mm -hmm. stuff, whatever, will funding still be available for that we're getting, or will we lose that money? Well, like what Mrs. Kinnaman teaches? Sort, and, sort of. <laughs> it's a, I it's a complicated question. I think they're still, I don't, I'm not sure that's completely done yet. It right, will, right. We'll continue but to get that money. It, CTE it will likely money. still be there. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's the best answer. Well, be there because we put it there? or No, it will It will be there. We can choose to do whatever we want with that funding. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my question re relates to the <coughs> junior high PE program. Is there any way we could change it to maybe do some SPQ with that? Because I, I think that, uh, well, my son is in high school now, and he enjoys that SPQ, and I just think we might as well advertise use that a little bit in the, the PE program in junior high. Everybody know what that is, what that speed power equipment is? It's weights class, and they do more than just weights, but it's a you know, fitness class in high school. I, don't know, I just think we could maybe encourage our training a little bit more into that rather than what they're doing now. So. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments, suggestions, anything? I do, th I mentioned earlier, you know, it's tough to talk about adding things, but I, I do st still, you know, with our budget situation the way it is, but I do still think we need to look at that and try to do the best we can for kids. But, uh, elementary, uh, Mr. Olive, you. <clears throat> Have anything you want to share here? Page 26 starts the elementary <coughs> schedule. Yeah, 26 is kind of our basic setup for most grades. Um, we have them kind of PE and music stacked in most grades. So like our kindergarten teachers, when one's in music, the other's in PE, and then they, they flip-flop. That gives those teachers kind of a common plan time to work together if they want to do units together and stuff like that. Same with first and second grade, they're staggered like that, and then the third and fourth grade are staggered together. Um, Kindergarten through second grade, they go to the computer lab with Mrs. Webb once a week. Uh, starting in third grade, they go at least twice a week. Um, part of that's because uh, state assessment wise, there's like a response component where they have to type answers and stuff. So it gives her a little extra time with those kids and a chance to do basic keyboarding skills and some of those things. Um, fifth and sixth grades on page 27 and 28, uh, that schedule's kind of there's a lot of movement. They, they move a lot from place to place. So I'm trying to, to work on something maybe that, that kind of coincides a little closer with the high school bell schedule. Um, you know, so that instead of in this class for over an hour, this class for 30 minutes, then they're up and moving. Trying to maybe next year come up with something that's, that's a little bit closer to the, the 51 or 52, whatever it is, high school, um, junior high bell schedule. That, that's kind of where they are at the different points throughout the day. <clears throat> Any questions about offerings for our elementary kids? Anything else? Anyone? Okay, 
we don't anticipate big changes next year, just like Mr. Ald was saying, maybe some with the schedule, but again, depending on budget and staffing and uh, <coughs> we get hired to fill positions and things like that might affect scheduling and what we can offer. So. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, item two, calendar for the 2015-16 school year. Last meeting we discussed this calendar. The one I presented to you was started one week earlier and ended one week earlier. Uh, after discussing it a little bit, looking at activities and stuff, uh, in May it's kind of difficult to get everything in, the graduation, uh, uh, all of the activities there. So we thought to accommodate for that it would be better to move it back later by one week. Uh, so really that puts us starting at the end of August and ending toward the end of May. Um, and really it doesn't affect anything else. Your air conditioning cost is probably higher in August than it is in May uh, in the typical year. So really you know, that will allow us to put off uh, starting up the AC again maybe by week. But not huge savings, but just another another situation. Um, you know, in discussing budget uh, issues, ways we can cut costs. Um, one thing we could consider, and it's been brought up, is maybe a four-day week or cutting days from the calendar. Um, my initial thought is having a four-day week or some four-day weeks really isn't going to do a lot of good. Uh, cutting a day through, you know, here and there throughout the year, uh, it'd be better to cut time off either end of the schedule. Uh, you know, if you take a Friday off, you're not going to shut the heater off. You're not going to shut the boiler off. It needs to run. You're going to have people in the gym, things like that. So, you really don't re realize a lot of savings. Um, really, if you cut days, you save on busing and you save on food service. And that's really about it. Uh, your hourly aides uh, don't really still work the same amount because to cut days we're going to have to add hours to the day or time to the day. Uh, so really they end up working about the same. Um, food service, really in the end when we take revenue and everything, it only costs us about $18,000 a year, eighteen to $20,000 a year uh, to operate that with uh, federal aid and state aid and uh, uh, and the fees we collect for food uh, for lunches and breakfasts uh, it really only costs about a hundred dollars a day uh, so the big savings would be on running your buses and paying bus drivers so you can save about seven hundred dollars a day but we're going to need to add time to the to the day to make that happen we're, we're pretty pretty darn close to our minimum right now so that being said uh, if things get drastic and we need to cut somewhere, that may be an option, um, but I think this is the way to go. So my recommendation is to approve this calendar as is. If we see further budget cuts from the state, we may need to revisit this. Uh, other than that, it's really the same calendar as this year, just changing by week, so the structure and everything. Any discussion? <clears throat> teachers are fine with it then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the teachers have a committee that the Teachers Association appoints to, and then uh, before I brought it to you all, well, I took it, we took it to the district leadership team and site councils. Uh, they, they didn't have really much input on it, and then sent it to our district leadership team, just those teachers, and said, uh, asked them to give me any more input. Mr. President, I move that we um, approve the 2015-16 school calendar as presented. Second that. Move second to approve the 2015-16 calendar as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Plus <coughs> nay. Motion carried 7-0. Sixth grade junior high track. Last month we discussed this and the opportunity, uh, uh, giving sixth grade students the opportunity <coughs> to participate. Uh, kind of help get them acclimated to junior high and uh, if we can offer those kids another chance to participate and it's not going to cost us any more money it's not going to take away from our seventh and eighth graders 
if that's the case, I would recommend uh, doing that. Uh, talked to Coach Smith again uh, yesterday about it just to make sure, and he said, "Well, if we if we have a bunch of uh, you know huge numbers of seventh and eighth graders, and we just still have that leeway to say no, we don't want to do it this year." So my recommendation would be that the board would approve that, and um, then leave it up to me if we have if we have 45 seventh and eighth graders. Adding sixth graders might take away from the program. We wouldn't do that. So uh, in the next week or so, they'd be signing up. So uh, we would know that for sure. So my recommendation is that the board approve that and then leave it up to me to make sure it's not going to take away from the other kids before we move ahead with now, that. This is just for track? or is Just for track. This, this item number three is only for junior high track. Any thoughts? How many coaches do we have? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I move the board approve uh, six grade students to participate in junior high track. Second. Move second is to approve six grade students to participate in junior high track. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries so <coughs> Junior high sports for 15-16. Uh, this is for next year, just thinking about all of the other sports and how we want to handle that. First, let's talk about football. Uh, sixth graders can't participate in football. The state will not allow that. Uh, the State Board of Education is actually who regulates that. And they say sixth graders cannot participate. So that's not an option. Right now we have seven that we would anticipate going out, correct? Yeah, there was six, definitely <clears throat> one was leaning that way. Okay. So seven, mostly yes, uh, uh, for eight-man football. Uh, now we may have kids move in. Uh, we may have kids decide, hey, I want to do this. Uh, but we need to be prepared uh, for what we will do to offer our kids the opportunity. I think we have two options. We would cooperate with another school, uh, or we'd ask the league if they would play six man. That's assuming we would have uh, six kids to put out there. Uh, six man football is different rules. Uh, there's there's a whole new set of rules, but I, I think we wouldn't play those rules. We just play eight man rules with the kids we have. Have you talked to any schools? Uh, ask Maxville if there would be an opportunity. If, if there would be something there, uh, they would be open to it. If uh, uh, you know, they haven't discussed it with their board or anything, but uh, it hasn't gone that far. But just trying to put feelers out of what we might do. So. Mm -hmm. I'd be in favor of six men football myself. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's maybe 20, 20 males. Why is it that they that more don't want to go out? <coughs> 20. Next so, year, I think, yeah, next next year, year, I think there's seven. 12 and 8. I think there's like seven like. boys. Or seven, I think there's seven boys in, in next year's seventh grade class. I think, I think okay. there's seven boys out of 18. I think it's seven boys out. Yeah. I think there's only two or three of them that want to play. Yeah. There might be four or five kids that are eighth grade. I don't know the answer to why. Uh, one of them said, you know, my mom doesn't want me to go out. My parents don't want me to do that. Well, that's why I'm wondering if it's something that we're doing or if it's something that just... It's a cycle. I spoke to the sixth graders, asked each boy individually, and there's some that played bulldog football the last two or three years and don't plan on going out next year and they don't really know why. Maybe, maybe they're just getting burned out. Well, uh, <clears throat> the, re the reason that I would lean towards six man is that uh, asking another school to do the co-op thing they have asked us before and we said no, so I don't know why I would want to ask them. 
to start with if we can field a team with six. If all else fails, then sure. But yeah. I mean, I, don't know, I, I email all the uh, league schools and I'll talk to them at the league meeting <coughs> to see if there's any interest in us when they play us. Play six man. I don't. Mm -hmm. Some I think will be fine with it. Some may not. I don't know. Yeah. Better on our schedule yeah. because we have. You know, we <coughs> Maxwell's open to the idea of co-oping, and we chose them because they're in our league. Stafford's not in our league, so it'd be easier. Well, but I think probably more important than what what we as adults have decided over the years. Right. Uh, it's probably and more important to look at what's the best thing for our kids, yeah. whether uh, moving forward and. <coughs> yeah. I, I don't. I don't have a firm recommendation on what we ought to do. Uh, I, I want to keep our kids in blue uniforms and uh, keep them here and offer them the best we can. That's number one. But you know, if you've got six kids on the team, is it better for those kids if we have to drive them to Maxville or somewhere else to, to be on their team, if they get that opportunity to play? And, Don't you, don't, when does this need to be decided? Co-op. June 1 is the co-op date for fall sports. So we have to submit a yeah, form to the form. state. Yeah. By June. It says, um, as school districts, we're both okay with this cooperative mm -hmm. agreement. And it's in effect for two years. Now, if we would say we want to enter into a cooperative agreement at the junior high level, we can choose to later on decide not to do that. At high school, when they set postseason and everything, you're combining enrollments. Different. You really need to stick to that once you make that agreement with junior high. I think. If we don't do it, we would. It wouldn't be that big a deal. But uh, scheduling for our uh, for our junior high games next year uh, will be an issue. We really need to know moving forward which which route we're going to take. We have a schedule now. We have a schedule for next year. It's just a we would need to change if we, yeah. So either our, if we did cooperate with another school, uh, the two options would be we take our volleyball team along and they three teams play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or the volleyball would do their own thing, and, uh, go to one school and it would just be a volleyball match, and then our football kids would be going with the other school. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's, uh, it's not a good situation. Like it is. Yes. It, it, well, because volleyball yeah. is affected too because they play on the same night. Yeah. And next year we have to have six great girls play, but we will have five or six girls out for volleyball and basketball. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think we need to dig a little deeper on why the kids aren't wanting to go out. Whether, <clears throat> whether they're playing bulldog football and they're having a bad experience, or you know, whether, what what really is going. I mean, because that's less than half the boys that we have. And, I mean, we just never had this trouble before. I, I think there might be something else going on that we're not aware of. Maybe I don't know. We're going to look into it. Sure. Yeah. It just seems weird to me. Who's the coach? Well, last fall? Junior. Yeah. Last, right. last fall, Clint <coughs> was. Clint was last right. fall. No. But he won't. He's not coaching again next year. Well, I mean, I'll just do it. Yeah, he's going to do it. Yeah. That's it. Oh. So we put this off for yeah. Nothing needs to be decided now. Um, the the other item um, uh, would be as far as including sixth graders. You know, with our girls, we're going to need to do that. We need to be prepared for that decision. How we want to move forward with that. If if the board wants us to come to come to you all, uh, or do we want to put a policy in place that says let administrators decide from year to year, from sport to sport. Uh, with those things in mind, it's not going to cost us more. It's not going to interfere with seventh and eighth grade opportunities. Any input on on that? I'd just like to let the sixth graders go ahead and go out for all the sports, rather than saying boys only or girls only. Just let them all go out and be part of the team if they want to. I'd be in favor of leaving it up to the administration to by by sport, by sex. 
boys or girls, depending on the yeah. numbers. I hate to feel. hate to limit. But, <clears throat> you know, you can go out for basketball if you, or you can go out for track. But you can't go out for basketball. Or, I kind of think we need to do it or not do it. Just for people. Allow it for all sports needs. Well, especially the parents, so they get it in their head. Kids can play or not. It does create a problem if they don't know. I can see that if they don't know well. I don't know if they're going to be playing basketball this year. You know, next year they might be, might not be. I think we need to do it, like you yeah. say. There's a lot of you know, working parents that need to plan for their evenings and transportation. I wouldn't disagree with that, but I look at Greensburg and see them bring 40 kids. Yeah. yeah. And that's ridiculous because no one's going to play. And I, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. Right. At, you know, at some point, yeah. there's, there's a line you cross that yeah. and, and it's and, just too many. You know, they started it and, and they won't stop. And they, they combined with Haviland, Olinville, whatever, and they got a boatload of the kids. And that's not a good situation. Is that because they have six straight? Yeah, six straight, six straight plays. They just let them. Their superintendent had told me at one point yeah. that I, I don't think that's good. That they that they at some point decided all the schools in their league that had sixth graders mm -hmm. playing, and they found that when their kids got into seventh grade, they were behind, and they made that decision to let them all play. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you you know, transportation becomes an issue, mm -hmm. taking opportunities away from other kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and, coaching. Uh, coaching. Oh, How many like, coaches do you need? Yeah. So, uh, uh, being behind I'd rather have quality kids. than quantity. Yeah, kids wanna, that really want to be there to play hard and not. I don't want to get in a situation where it costs us more money to do that. Yeah. But yet, we need some kind of uniformity. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, we're, it's hard to have this discussion because we were just talking about six boys on a football team. And, <laughs> and then we're on the other side. Well, to make but, but, but it will yeah. come back around. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. always does. Yeah. Right. And, and you start it, and, 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 and it's a blanket thing. Mm -hmm. How about if, if we put together a... Yeah. We can just use judgment on what well, That's one reason we'll we see, put together some I'm guidelines. I'm thinking that the administrators so. can have the judgment to say, oh. And, oh. You know, and, and whether we mm -hmm. want it to be, okay, everything this year, or by a sport, you know, it's but makes be no year difference. to year. But be year to year. We could put together some guidelines for numbers that what what might be too much for each sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll work on that. We'll uh, bring that back here in a month or two and yeah. uh, have something more specific if that sounds good. Okay. Good discussion. Um, or key sign. I would back to that. Yep, we discussed this a couple months ago. The board wanted to get input from the site councils, um, uh, community members on there. Um, yeah, the discussion at the table was about uh, our budget cuts and uh, what's going to happen with state finances and all of that, and then we talk about this, and how much money do we want to spend on that, and it, you know, really kind of stifled that conversation. But I, I guess the input was, uh, it's nice to have, we like it, but is that what we really want to be putting our money into, uh, especially at this point? So the consensus was more, let's just get a nice sign uh, that's, you know, similar to this, just without the electric components in that same spot. Uh, Pete Witt, um, his memorial fund uh, donated to the foundation. Um, Ryan had asked about maybe that money going toward the purchase of a new uh, just static sign, lighted, maybe unlighted. Uh, I don't even know what that would cost. I'd have to pursue that. But. So who's going to do the static sign? Uh, we'd probably get a vendor to do it. 
have, have a professor name. Like, oh, oh, no, no, it would just be like uh, St. John Hudson USD 350, oh. home of the Tiger, or something like that, and that would be So it. you're not going to say what's going on? No. Like the old sign? No. I like that idea. Yeah. I think as long as we don't have to spend any money, I'm okay with it. <laughs> but I don't want to spend any money on it. That kind of the consensus. I'll try to get some quotes and proposals to see what it's going to cost yeah. to do a sign. I like the identification mm -hmm. idea, and I, you know, electronic is not that big a deal because people had to stop and read it anyhow. So right. well, yeah. yeah, if they just had a light on it. Yeah. And I like adding the home of the tigers. I don't. Okay. I don't think it looks bad when it is right there. It doesn't have Hudson. Well. <laughs> Never has. It seems a little dated. Under, so under, underneath looks fantastic. That's not going by that old. That's probably worth less than 10. Well, no, it's less than 80. So, yeah. yeah it's probably got a year after I got on board or something. Yeah. Okay. We'll all work on that in that direction there. Yep. All right. Yeah. Item 6 budget planning. Um, this item, um, I, there's going to be a lot of information here. Uh, you know, we've discussed the state budget situation, what's going to happen there. Uh, at this point, it's all, it's all really a guess. Um, but let me, uh, on, on Friday, the, the legislature came out with the, what they're calling block grants. School finance formula is complicated. Um, school, schools are complicated. Uh, as you know, our funding is based on the number of kids we have. We get extra funding for kids we transport, uh, for kids that come from uh, poverty, things like that. Why is that? Because it takes more to educate those kids. Uh, research tells us that. Uh, but the consensus, I guess, I don't know if consensus is the right word, but the push from a lot of legislators is it's too complicated, we need to change it. Uh, so to do that, they've said, let's just take a time out and say, here's your funding for the next two years, we'll rewrite the finance formula and go from there. Um, so this block grant, what they're, what they're looking at is, uh, recently, Actually, they only officially took effect last week, but the allotment cuts, state budget's in trouble, the governor had to make cuts to make it through this year. Uh, we discussed this last month, made about $26,000 loss for us. Uh, not a huge deal, but uh, any money out of our budget is a problem. So this proposal would restore that those cuts this year back to what we thought it was going to be, what our funding was going to be. It would look at this year's funding and say it's going to be the same basically for the next two years uh, based on this year's funding. Uh, the good thing about that is we've been increasing enrollment, uh, our local option budget's in a good spot, so really this is a good year for us to take a snapshot and say this is where our funding is going to be. Uh, so that aspect of it for USD 350's budget is positive. Uh, this would remove the restrictions on the weightings, the at-risk and transportation, all those things, what they're calling silos. We have money in transportation. We have money in capital outlay. We have money in our general fund. We have money in at-risk fund. And those things have to be spent in a certain way. So it says forget about that, spend it how you want to. Forget about any of that. The problem with that is, as far as the state is concerned, is there's no accountability for that. And the state gives the school district money for at-risk kids. It needs to be spent on at-risk kids. And we need to show that as a school district that we're spending it in that way. This would remove that. Uh, so the flexibility is good, but without the flexibility is a lack of accountability. But again, we're only talking two years for now. Local option budget would have two choices. It can be the same as this year, or it can be 
what we would be legally allowed to do next year. Uh, so for us, uh, our budget would revert back to 31%. Uh, so we can either go back down to whatever that number would be, or we can use this year's number of just over one million. And that's up to that. You can do whatever we want within that. <clears throat> so we would not need to have an, an additional election to maintain that budget, at least for the next two years. Equalization aid would be reduced. That's the aid that poorer districts, uh, as far as valuation is concerned, get for capital outlay and local option budget. <clears throat> we get none of that. So with this proposal, a lot of that aid is reduced. That's how they're paying for all of this. Uh, so it won't affect us, but it does affect a lot of school districts in the state. Um, and then from year to, for the next two years, we would see a tiny increase for operating funds. So those numbers there this year is, is what we have, what we planned on for our general fund, for general state aid. Now, what they're calling general state aid includes our, what used to be known as local effort, and our 20 mills. Now that's general state aid because it doesn't come to us, it comes to the state. Uh, the CAPERS funding, which for years and years they've underfunded uh, what they should have been paying, uh, so now they need to make up for that. Uh, that's another piece of the puzzle. You know, they've been making less than the minimum payment on the credit card, and now we need to catch up. That's what's happening with CAPERS. Next year we'd see about an increase of about $10,000, uh, which is four-tenths of a percent. Uh, I promise you inflation will be more than that. <clears throat> uh, capers would be uh, more of an increase. So when they tell us that they're going to increase school funding, that's true, but I can't touch that capers. That comes into our budget and out the next day. Uh, so we'll hear that we'll get an increase of 2.5% next year, but we won't. It's more like four-tenths of a percent. The following year, a little bit more, uh, and same situation with capers would increase. So, in a nutshell, for USD 350, this block grant pro proposal for our budget is about as good as we could expect. Um, a lot less gloom and doom. I don't know how they're going to pay for it. Uh, I'm still not convinced uh, they know how they're going to pay for it. Um, but some of our neighbors that do get that equalization aid, they lose out quite a bit. It's not a, it's not a pretty situation for a lot for eighty percent of the school districts in the state. So um, I'm not worried about their budgets, but that would make this bill tougher to pass. Uh, any quick questions about this block grant proposal? In, in simple terms, it, it, it seems okay, it seems like a good system, but uh, I, I don't think it's the right way to go for our school finance uh, system. But I don't get to decide that. So. That's one thing that will affect our budget. Um, another thing we discussed last <coughs> month is our <coughs> valuation, our property valuation. So some of this is kind of review, but I'll make sure we understand that we won't set anything in stone yet. Uh, that won't happen until, uh, until July and August. So really the things we control, what we have a say in, is our local option budget. And I didn't change any of this from last, uh, this here from last uh, meeting. But what we have now is our budget set at just over a million. And that's at 32.2 percent of our general fund. Now again, that could have gone to 33, but we didn't really need to go on that way. That's our mill levy based on this year's valuation. Next year, current law says it will go back to 31 percent. So we wouldn't have that option to do anything different. This would be our maximum, uh, which would be a loss of about 38,000. We could have an election to go higher 
this would be the max again based on this year's budget. Uh, this would be the mill levy, so it could change a little bit. Uh, capital outlay, this is what we're set at now. Six and a half mills. Why did we set it there? Um, just to kind of offset the increase there. And this is what we could be at. Now for next year, uh, let's, uh, let's look at this valuation piece. Um, this is a, I guess, an educated guess um, based on what I know about the oil uh, prices in our state. Uh, what's happened historically to our valuation when we've seen this kind of decrease. Uh, if we would see a huge decrease in our oil valuation, what would happen? Uh, really, it was about the same, I think in 2008, we saw a 14% reduction in our overall dis school district valuation. Um, our valuation is made up of these four areas. If we just took a guess, at, those areas are going to increase 5%. Why 5%? It's just a guess. Uh, and then oil and gas, what if that decreased by half? That means about a 19% drop in our total valuation. So knowing that and knowing what's happened in history, um, let's plan for a 15% drop in valuation. What would that look like? Well, we've got three options here. Maintain our mill levy. If we didn't want to change that at all. Our valuation drops. Our dollars for our budget are going to drop, or we have to raise our mill levy. One of those two things. So if we would maintain the mill levy, our general fund set at 20 mills, it's not going to change, it can't change. That's set in state statute. Local option budget, if we maintain that at 31%, <coughs> and this was put together before I knew the specifics of the block grant and what we can do there. So. If we went back to 31%, how would that change? Capital outlay, we would adjust that to make our mill levy zero out, which is kind of what we've done historically uh, with, with these huge changes. So our total mills wouldn't change at all. Overall budget, uh, we would be down about 185000 This would be operating. This would be just for you know, capital outlay items. In the bottom row there, the maximum, what would, could we do? A maximum LOV, capital outlay would be at 8 mils, that would be our maximum. And really, even if we would max it out, we're still losing. Why? Because our valuation's dropped, we're getting fewer dollars. And if we would meet in the middle somewhere, um, I just picked six for capital outlay. So really, we don't have a whole lot of leeway to do much of anything. If we, our LOB's maxed out, really this capital outlay is the only thing we have to change. So if we did that, then our mill levy would go up about a little over two. You know, according to the history graph you have here, we've been at 52, or close to 51, a couple of years in the past. Yeah. So here's our recent past. <clears throat> so this one would be next year, if we would be flat, or if we would go to on that uh, the middle of the road, and then the maximum where we would be. And again, this is all assuming that the valuation dropped 15%. It could be more than that, it could be less than that. I speculation right now. Um, You're just preparing. Yeah, any, any initial input? <coughs> And again, I, the block grant thing might change things. You know, then our, our LOB can be where it is this year. Uh, if our general fund uh, is not cut this year, 
If those allotment cuts are restored, that makes things a lot better. Um, if we don't have to deal with further cuts next year, it makes things a lot different. Any questions about this information here? Uh, any input initially? Heck no, we're not going to change the mill levy. Figure out a way to. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of need to know what the state's going to do before you can. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. what you want yeah. to do. So. Yeah. Probably need to be in front of the studio. Okay. Um, the other thing that's coming up in our discussions and need to be need to look at with all of this uh, is our staffing levels. Uh, with our budget cuts, we really need to uh, those things need to be discussed in open session. You know, the public has a, an interest in knowing those things. If we start talking specific personnel issues. Uh, relating to staff members, we need to do that in executive session. So there may be a couple of things we need to discuss in executive session related to this. But um, you know, a couple of months ago, we've been talking about what are we going to do with second grade uh, next year, and we have two first grade teachers. And there's 28 in there right now. I guess 27 now. 27. Uh, so. Uh, it's a big class of second graders. That's a tough situation. Um, this is a good problem to have, I guess, that we're, we've got more kids and we need to figure out what to do with them. Um, the challenge is, do you, you move a teacher to second grade and then the next year move them to third grade and, and so on. That's, it, it just becomes a have a teacher learning a new grade every year. Um, also, you know, kids move in and kids move out. I mean, you've seen that month to month on on uh, Mike and Travis's reports on pluses and minuses. Um, is that 35? Correct. Uh, anticipating some kids not moving on to first grade, and then those four and five year old preschool kids moving up to kindergarten. So. Yes, that's our best guess, uh, what we'll have in kindergarten next year. So, again, it's a nice problem to have. Um, not as much fun when uh, our funding's not based on enrollment anymore. Um, so, you know, fifth grade's a big class. Uh, Mrs. Frank has had, you know, all those kids. Was there 28 in there at one point? 27? 26 is the 26 is the biggest it's been. And, uh, you know, our rooms aren't made to hold all that, all those kids and all that stuff. Uh, junior and senior high school classes, um, you know, this will come up, and it has. Uh, your numbers. Uh, in each class. When I'm an elementary teacher and I have 26 kids in my class and I look at uh, yeah, so we have 14 and 10 and 8 here and there, uh, it doesn't seem fair. Um, so I wanted to make sure we, we understand this. Uh, offering things like basic algebra with a low number we cannot offer that and leave some kids out. You know, we have physics. What's the difference between the basic algebra and then transition algebra? Or the transition algebra would be, would be more like algebra one. Uh, they just move at a slower pace. Um, and basic algebra, algebra would be lower than yeah. the algebra one. Okay. Yeah. I see. Uh, if you think about the, uh, you know, the, you know, Mr. Bauer's schedule, could we do all of the, could he just do all of the social studies? You know, you could put all the American history kids in one, one course. Uh, you could do that. But, you know, nine from one and eleven in the other, 
put them all in one, and the juniors have to take only that class. Uh, now, what do we do with Mr. Bauer during that hour? You know, if we're going to increase his number just so it looks better, we still have to do something with Mr. Bauer during that hour. Um, you know, in English, you know, same thing with, with the, at that same point, you know, Mrs. Pound has 11th grade, same time that Mr. Bauer has American history. So the juniors are either taking American history or um, English, and then the next hour they flip flop. So again, you can put them all in one. All the juniors take English one hour, and all the juniors take American history the next hour. What do we do with those teachers the other hour? Um, could they come down and teach an hour of fourth grade? You know, it doesn't really make sense to do that. Really, to make a difference, shuffling the schedule, cross off one of those lines, and that frees up funds to hire people at other grade levels. Now, I know the block schedule has been talked about many a time. Does that alleviate any of this small class? I think it makes it worse. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't really have any input on this. I, I, in a school our size, you know, one and two A, um, you know, you're going to have small numbers in some classes, and uh, in order to offer what we need to, what we want to offer, I don't know how we do it with less staff. Um, you know, there's places we can get creative with our Spanish, um, <coughs> and we have, you know, we share Spanish with a neighbor. You know, Wendy's halftime history and halftime counselor. Mm -hmm. Any questions about those items, uh, those things? This is a this is a challenge. Our elementary, you know, we do have uh, five aides that help out throughout the day uh, in these grade levels. An aide doesn't make the classroom bigger, but it uh, that person does help out. So the second grade next year, that's the biggest concern. Yeah, that's our biggest concern. And you know, fifth grade next year. You know, we've had the concern with fourth grade this year. It's not. Not that it hasn't been a challenge this year. So, and that aids in there all day. Uh, no. no, they've got a, their own schedule, uh, depending on what what's going on. The hardest part about first and second grade is they're still learning to read. Yeah. And the priority has been and definitely needs to be our younger grades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a classroom of 26 first graders is a lot different than 26 fifth graders. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, we may need to consider something like, you know, instead of having you know, one teacher that would follow a big class through, you know, this kindergarten class, next year's kindergarten class coming up, would it make sense to have maybe three teachers at two grade levels uh, and get creative in that way? You know, focus one teacher, that third teacher, on math and reading for one grade and helping out with math and reading for the other oh, grade. Oh, we used to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Here. Okay. Yeah. Three teachers at two grade well, levels. Well, that, that, or, or you know, if, if you had, let's just say, two first grade teachers, uh, one did reading or whatever, and the other one just did math right. and stuff like that. And <coughs> you split up two different grades, that would help on prep stuff, wouldn't it, Travis? 
if you were just doing the reading part or something and not having to do all the... Like if I or, or some teacher was just in charge of reading and math for yeah. first for, and second yes, grade. Yes, yeah. A little bit, yeah, I mean it reduces it to four reps basically, yeah. reading yeah. reading in each grade and math in each grade. Mm -hmm. And we used to do that. Mm -hmm. So we kind of do that fifth and sixth grade still. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. continued that hasn't really, <coughs> really changed. But. You know, we're really we need to talk be talking about how can we get more staff and uh, and that kind of plays into this. What is there somewhere we need to be looking? in house to make that happen or and again it come back to doesn't matter till the state tells us what, what we're doing. So by then it's kind of late. I mean if you want to hire yeah. a good teacher right. you need to be yeah. looking now. Mm -hmm. They're not helping us out much are they? State level. Okay. It's a difficult situation. Um, and then we'll, I'll have some items we need to discuss in personnel uh, related to this. Okay. Thank you. Communications board member activities. Congratulations, St. John Tigers. <laughs> On this state. That's what I was going to say. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Still the I didn't say anything. Oh, He's yeah. got the sentence playing. <laughs> Stay in. <laughs> nothing. Nothing, uh, nothing for myself this month either. Um, administration, Mr. Allen. Um, got my enrollment numbers up there. They, I did this on Thursday and we lost a first grader on. Friday and enrolled a kindergartner on Friday. So we actually have 25 in kindergarten, 27 in first grade right now, but the total number of 164 in K through six still stands. Um, tomorrow night in the gym will be the PE program for grades, uh, kindergarten through fourth grade. I think they kind of have a circus theme built around the evening. So if clowns terrify you, it's probably best to <laughs> avoid the gym tomorrow night. Um, State assessments, today was the, the window open for districts across the state to start taking those. Um, because of state basketball and just kind of stuff this week, we pushed ours off till after spring break. We'll have a couple of our grades take uh, the science and the history one that first week back to just take a day and then kind of the following week we'll really get the ball rolling with um, the reading and math state assessments in grades three through six, we'll see how that goes this year. Uh, farm, Ag Day, whatever you want to call it, is scheduled for April 10th. That should be at the Alpers Farms. Um, you know, last year Mr. Cooper kind of at his place in, I believe it was in September, we took the kids out there and they, they went around to some different stations and stuff and Leah contacted me early in the year, said that they were interested in doing something again this year and uh, so kind of they put something together. So our kids will be going out there in a few weeks for that um, one morning. Uh, administratively, third nine weeks ended on Friday. Uh, today was a, a teacher in-service uh, slash work day where they had a chance to get their grades done. Uh, for the in-service portion of it, we continued work with the math and reading curriculum development. The math is pretty close to being done. Uh, the reading, English, language arts still will continue a couple more times throughout the year and then kind of into next year, so they're still making progress on that. Last. Wednesday, I believe it was, I attended a career fair at Emporia State, um, didn't have a lot of success there. It was, you know, I was told Mr. Meyer I was in between the Shawnee Mission and Gardner Edgerton School District, so there weren't a lot of people real <laughs> excited to see me in between, and so <laughs> didn't talk to, a, to very many people there, but did talk to a couple that, that knew of St. John, one that was from the area and stuff, but wasn't interested in returning home, so that's all I've got. Thanks, Mr. Carlos. Mr. Bergen? Yes, enrollment. I think enrollment numbers are pretty close to the same, I believe. Yep. Uh, 
we have the same family that has a new kindergarten. We have a new seventh and eighth grader, but they're not included in those numbers. So there's a couple more that'll start tomorrow. Um, they just came in last uh, Friday and they'll start. Um, we finished that up today, getting them all transferred over. Um, and you can see the students up there that were at the learn that are still at the learning center. Um, we inducted five students into a National Honor Society on February 15th. I put their names up there. If we recognize them on the 15th, which is a, a cool deal. Um, League Scholars Bowl was today. Junior High Elite Scholars Bowl was today at Lacrosse. Mr. Bauer took a group up there, so I'll let you know about that. Uh, they weren't back before I came over. Um, Junior high band vocal students went to the lacrosse last Friday to a music festival. And Mr. I got Mr. Knight, uh, Aiden Reed performed a piano solo issues. In junior high, I got a two. Junior high band received two threes and a two. Junior high choir received a two, a two plus, and a two plus. And actually, Mr. Knight, when he told me, he said the kids did a great job. Uh, they represented themselves well, behaved well, um, uh, did a very good job. He was, he was, uh, Really pleased with how things went. So I uh, wanted to share that with you. Um, High School League Music Festival is tomorrow at Martin County, hosted by Otis Bison. Take choir and uh, band, uh, band kids up there for that. Um, later this month, on the 31st, is the High School CPL Honors Banquet, where we recognize the top 10% of the juniors and senior class from across the league. So nine schools will have. 10% of their juniors, 10% of their seniors, and they go to, um, this year it's, it rotates around, last year we hosted it here, and next, this year it's in Otis, and that's on the 31st, and I'll have more info on to you on that next month. Um, the class leadership, if some of you remember, this year we started a class leadership where we had students, so many students from each grade, 9 through 12, and we did that with Ellenwood and Hoisington. Uh, back in September we went to Poisington in December we went to Ellenwood and uh, last Wednesday we were here in the lodge um, so we were nice uh, people in the lodge were nice enough to let us use that um, we had uh, Joe Coles comes in and leads that for each day did a good job kids did a great job participating from all three schools um, so we'll see how that goes if we pursue something like that next year Joe does some stuff with leadership and things along the lines that Bill Cordes did as you've heard me talk about Bill Cordes when he comes to talk to our kids. So that was good. Um, and uh, activity account report, you should have all those at your on the computer or iPads. Um, and Mr. Uh, Meyer, I'm sure we'll mention about state basketball. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Meyer? Uh, Mr. Allen mentioned the Emporia State trip. Um, we try not to go too far east for those. Uh, a lot of, a lot of them don't want to go, go way out to McPherson to Western Kansas. Uh, so some of those folks wouldn't have a shot uh, to recruit them out here. But uh, sometimes it's worth a shot. We'll see if you. I went to Fort Hayes today um, uh, for the same thing. Uh, colleges will have a career fair. Um, I went to Newton last week for. It was more of an interview day where. Uh, candidates scheduled interviews so got a lot of resumes got a lot of uh, a lot of interest uh, um, so some good possibilities uh, preschool teacher we did sign up uh, one today um, uh, mr. Olive had interviewed her some like, a couple weeks ago a week ago yeah, probably, uh, yeah, probably now. yeah. and uh, she was there today and uh, the co-op folks were there you know that's hired through them, so I've got a good candidate there and uh, committed to the job. Um, a climbing wall grant, I think I put this in the Friday note, I wrote a grant for about $8,000 to the Golden Belt Community Foundation to put a climbing wall, uh, you know, eight foot high, where the kids would just climb across uh, and see how that comes out. Hopefully we get that. Uh, it's amazing how expensive that stuff is. Um, where, where did that go? Uh, up by behind where the pet band plays on that side, um, where the drums are, I'll be just in the corner there on the deck. Um, and if we don't get the grant, of course we won't 
they won't buy it. But. Uh, Joint Professional Development Day went very well with Stafford. Uh, it was all here. Um, great feedback from the teachers. I uh, thought it was a, a really neat day. I uh, wanted to do it again. Uh, teachers were able to share things with each other. Uh, talked about family engagement and getting uh, parents engaged in our school. Uh, how we can go about that. So we'll do it again next year. Uh, probably over at Stafford. Uh, technology is one of our board goals. Um, this is another item we've just got lingering out there that uh, it's tough to pull the trigger and make uh, huge purchases uh, with our budget situ situation the way it is. You know, the technology can be a capital outlay purchase, but uh, we're kind of holding out to see if we need to use some of our capital outlay for uh, pay custodial salaries or something like that to help out with our operational budget. So um, I'll be visiting with the Education Foundation to see about if that board might be willing to pony up some money uh, for to, to help us add some more technology. Uh, that would take a lot of the pressure off uh, for this budget year. You know, we put a lot of work into that. We're ready to move ahead. Uh, uh, just a money issue right now. Uh, another money issue is textbooks. What we and kind of what I thought we would be doing is over the next year look at uh, updating our math textbooks, uh, at least for elementary, uh, maybe the secondary. You know, we've gone through the curriculum, uh, you know, got that in order. Uh, what we've really found is with our elementary, there's a lot of things, particularly at the upper grades, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, that we should be teaching in sixth grade, but our fifth grade book has those topics. There's a lot of those things, or there's things not in our textbook uh, that we need to be teaching, and we, we need to supplement from from other sources, you know, finding things online or other other books. So, um, what we're looking at doing, we spend about three thousand dollars a year on workbooks for our math textbooks. Uh, that comes out of our textbook fund. Uh, you okay, Bill? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and we've got we've got funds in our text. We got money in our textbook fund for that that uh, very thing. But if it would be more of a matter of shifting some of that instead of paying three thousand dollars a year for this textbook and workbooks, we'd take that money and put it toward new ones, different ones, uh, and. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that. Uh, we're talking budget issues, but why are we buying new textbooks? Because we need to. Uh, that's what we need to be looking at. So we may try to push that ahead and uh, make that happen for next year. Uh, process would ideally take a little longer, but uh, if we can get it done, we'll try to do that. So. Is, is there ever going to come a time where these textbooks come across on like an iPad on an app or something? The, the one, ones we're looking at do, you know, you have to buy a subscription, you know, rather than paying 20 bucks a kid for the workbook, you pay 20 bucks a kid for the subscription to the online book. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, I, I don't know that we're ready for that until we have more technology. Uh, and another barrier to that is homework. Not every kid has access to that online book at home. That's just another barrier. But yes, it's available now. So, um, in some of these, it could be we have a paper books for a couple of years, and then we move into the online version later. And a lot of the elementary textbooks anymore, it's more consumable workbooks, not you know, not a hardbound book. Stuff they tear out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just you know, they do the work in and mm -hmm. then every year you know, they could update things and you don't have to worry about having a 10 year old textbook that's out of date. But, um. uh, administratively, um, <clears throat> we did have a, a community member file a complaint with the American Civil Liberties Union for uh, uh, a situation with the cheer sweatshirts and for religious songs um, in our junior high music program. Uh, I think we 
we've handled those situations. I don't think we could have, uh, uh, you know, the areas where we were wrong, we took care of and handled. Um, I don't think there's anything more we can do. Uh, the music situation, I don't think we're in the wrong. Uh, we're not violating board policy. So I've discussed that with uh, with the KASB attorney and we'll respond if we get uh, um, get a complaint from from them, get a letter from the ACLU um, and we'll approach it that way. So I want to make sure everybody knew about that situation. Um, board elections are coming up. Candidate forum. March 26th at 8 p.m. is here. They're doing the city council before that yeah, in the community room. Um, I'll be there. Uh, I'll make sure I'm there to uh, if, if I need to give any input or answer any questions. Uh, the general election is on April 7th. I'm not sure when advanced voting starts, but it's pretty easy here in the county to vote early. So. Uh, I'm going to skip the legislative update because all of the efforts are focused on that block grant. Uh, some of the other things have kind of died off. Uh, there was a bill that, that would say if, if, if you're a teacher in the state of Kansas, your relatives cannot be a board member anywhere. I'm a teacher in Liberal and my mom lives in Johnson County, she can't be on the school board because I'm a teacher. That's kind of died out. Um, uh, there's a lot of bills floating around, a lot of things yet to come, but I'll uh, try to send those in my upcoming notes. Um, our long-range plan for capital outlay uh, is, is again uh, something I've been working on uh, really all along. That's kind of been a goal of this board to make sure uh, we can plan for those things. Uh, this, I just want to show you this quickly to uh, let you know what that might look like and see if we're headed in the right direction. Don't pay attention to the numbers. Uh, this, we know a little more about the budget. This is what I'll bring to you uh, probably, probably, but hopefully before we approve the budget for next year so we know what we're actually budgeting for. Uh, but we would have a five-year plan and those budget areas and we have our debt service which is our lease purchase payment and I do have the specifics lined out that what would that be in transportation what would we plan to purchase technology what are we looking at which you uh, furniture and equipment, you know, some of those things we're, we're guessing on but, uh, for replacement. Mechanical systems, what are we going to need to do? Take care of. Unscheduled, that would just be keeping some budget authority there for things we need to take care of that come up. And then miscellaneous, if we, if we just, if this board decides we need to be taking some of our capital outlay money to operate our school district, which we did, weren't allowed to do before that we do that. Uh, that's not, I don't plan to do that this year, uh, but we, we could. And then the next five years after that we would be less specifics, and then the ten years after that even less specific. What will we be looking at uh, there? So kind of the same things, but not as specific. Well, I know the track season is coming up, but you guys thought any more about what you want to do with the track? Or? A good question. We, uh, we did apply for that waste tire grant again uh, to pay for half of that. So uh, if we get that, we'll have to make that decision whether that's something we want to move forward with and half of it's being paid for or not. So. Yeah. I'm on the right track with what the board would like to see for that mm -hmm. long-range plan. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> transportation outsourcing. Uh, the request for proposals will go out this week. Try to finalize that. I'd hope to have that out last week, but we'll get it out. 
this week, we will look at just leasing only, uh, not having somebody run our entire bus fleet, but if we would just lease the buses, uh, what would that cost us compared to if somebody's running the whole show? Uh, so we know uh, that that's also an option. State basketball, uh, we'll dismiss at noon on Wednesday, and if we win, we'll do the same thing on Friday. Folks can get up, get their hotels, do all of those things. Uh, that gives them plenty of time to do that. Um, the boys are good. We'll, they plan to stay all week. We'll get. Uh, we've already had some donations coming in to, to help out with that. Uh, um, cheerleaders will just stay on Friday. They'll go up and come back um, on Wednesday. Uh, the boys, you know, they'll need to practice and uh, find a place to do that. Uh, it, it'll cost us about four thousand dollars to do that, just food and lodging. So. Um, if everybody went, boys and girls, it's about it's over seven thousand dollars to uh, just to house and feed the kids. Uh, so uh, it's a it's a great honor for them to go. We're proud of them. And we're always grateful for uh, the community support in that. So, any questions about what's going on in state basketball this week? Some of the donations that we get does that reduce our what we got to pay for them? Or is yeah. It, do they need to run that through the school? I've had people ask me. Through the foundation okay. yeah, is, the, is best. If somebody writes a check to the school or gives money to the you know, to Zoe in the office, we try to just coordinate it all through the foundation and then we account for it that way. And then that way people can write it off if they would like. It's a little easier to do that. So that's all I had for my report. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else before we go into the second session? All right. Um, we have a personnel executive session item tonight. <coughs> Um, request 30 minutes, uh, include me and uh, the principals. Okay. Uh, a motion? Mr. President, I move that the board go in the executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of non elected personnel with Mr. Olive and Mr. Bergen to be included. <coughs> Mr. Meyer, and that they return to we return to open session in 30 minutes in this room. Second. Move second. We we'll go in executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of all the personnel with Mr. Meyer, Mr. Bergen, and Mr. Olive to be included. And we return to open session in 30 minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries 7 0. Um, I'd like to ask the board to uh, <clears throat> approve the principal's contracts as presented for uh, the next two years. Can you do them together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I move that uh, the board approve the principal's contracts for two years as presented. Second that. Move and second it to approve the principal contracts extensions for two years. As presented, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 7 0. Resignations. Uh, we've got a resignation here from Deb Pound uh, as an English teacher. And, uh, thank her for her service and ask uh, the board to approve her resignation uh, effective at the end of this year. Mr. President, with great regret, I ask that the board accept her resignation for this next year at the end of this year. There a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept Mrs. Pound's resignation at the end of the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7-0. Other resignation? Uh, same thing with Ms. Wybright. So, oh. well, I'll say it again with great, great regret, I move the board approve the resignation of 
Ms. Weinbright at the end of this year. Second. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the resignation of Ms. Weinbright at the end of the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Last resignation. Uh, Carolyn Dixon has also decided to retire. So, same thing. Uh, VP, uh, with great regret, I accept that our board approve Mrs. Dixon's resignation at the end of this year. Second. Move and second to accept Mrs. Dixon's resignation at the end of the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. One more resignation for uh, Andrea C Sailor Seifkees for uh, Scholars Bull sponsor for next year. Entertain a motion. Mr. President, I move that the uh, board accept the resignation of uh, Mrs. Seifkees for the Scholars Bowl. Yeah. Second. Move and second to accept the resignation of Mrs. Seifkees for the Scholars Bowl. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried 7 0. Supplemental contract. Ask the board to approve uh, hiring Darling Banky as the assistant junior class sponsor for this current school year. Okay, a motion. Uh, Mr. President, I'm Ann that we hire Mrs. Banky for junior high, junior high school class. Sponsor for this year. I'll second that. Move and seconded to our Miss Minky as the assistant junior class sponsor for this year. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. All right. And then all the business. Yep. Future agenda items. Hope we have some teachers to hire by the next meeting. Might be pushing it to get them done then, but uh, been working on it. Looking at handbooks, uh, see about having the foundation report next month, capital improvements, and getting some our maintenance items. Anything else come for the board? Right. Okay, motion for adjournment. I'll move the adjournment. I'll second that. Move and second, adjourn. All in favor, aye. Motion carried 7-0.